You know, it's interesting to me. Um, one of the things that I find very fascinating is we were talking about what he might sound like if he loses this election. There was a lot of chatter uh, from the nattering nabobs or whatever that was that uh, Peggy Newton invented. Um, and yet, we haven't heard from Hillary Clinton. I want to play a little bit of what her campaign manager, John Podesta, said earlier tonight. Take a listen. Thank you. Well, folks, I know you've been here a long time. And it's been a long night, and it's been a long uh, campaign. But I could say uh, we can wait a little longer, can't we? <laughs> They're still counting votes, and every vote should count. Several states are too close to call, so we're not going to have anything more to say tonight. So listen, listen to me. Everybody should uh, head home. You should get some sleep. We'll have more to say tomorrow. I want you to know, I want every person in this hall to know, and I want every person across the country who supported Hillary to know that your voices and your enthusiasm mean so much to her and to Tim and to all of us. We are so proud of you. And we are so proud of her. She's done an amazing job, and she is not done yet. So thank you for being with her. She has always been with you. I have to say this tonight. Good night. We will be back. We'll have more to say. Let's get those votes counted, and let's bring this home. Thank you so much for all of you have done. We are, you are in all of our hearts. Thank you. That's John Podesta, the campaign manager of Hillary Clinton, uh, speaking earlier. Now, we know that she will be making a speech uh, later this morning, Wednesday morning. Um, but is it unusual, Liz, to not concede, uh, even though she called President-elect Trump to concede <laughs> the election? <laughs> Some precedent for it in 2004, <coughs> when um, when President Bush won re-election, I remember the Kerry campaign sent John Edwards out on stage to basically say the exact same thing. Then we saw them concede the next morning. So there's precedent. And again, I do think there's a shock factor here, and the Clinton campaign is trying to figure out how do they square what they've been saying about him over the last few days with um, you know the reality that we do need to try to find some semblance of unity. And we talked about this this morning. Um, if she were to somehow lose this race tonight, uh, I, she was not going to be ready for it. She was sending all the body signals. All The, the, the campaign was acting <coughs> as if it were uh, a done deal. Mm -hmm. She was already turning the page to, the, to trying to unify the country, and she got ahead of herself. And there was clearly a late, either a late surge or voters came out or both uh, that weren't anticipated. And this utterly stunned this campaign. They had no, they, they said that they had written a speech. Right. Uh, you know, a concession speech. They clearly hadn't. They cleared, and they clearly yeah. hadn't thought it through. And they clearly didn't believe that there was any chance that she could actually lose this thing. So when it happens, um, it's always difficult. Take, and that's tough. But this was a thorough repudiation. You actually of heard that. early on in the night that they had both Clinton, both Clintons were working together on a speech. Yeah. But that was before the numbers had turned clearly in, in Trump's favor. There was just a tweet put out by NATO chief saying that it's important that the transatlantic bond remains strong at a time of challenging security environment. NATO. Something that Trump has They're said worried. he wants he to get said, rid of. Yeah. What does this mean, Liz? It means the world is watching us, and the world is going to watch what Donald Trump does in the coming weeks. Um, and it's something that we haven't talked a, a lot about in recent days. Um, we've seen news stories about it, but. Again, the United States has always been held up as this beacon of hope, you know, kind of the glue that holds together all these countries. And it needs to continue to show leadership, to continue to have strong relationships going forward with our allies, even under Donald Trump. Kevin, I, I want to go back to what we were talking about with Hillary um, and the concession speech. You, because it's so great when you have somebody here who's worked on a campaign, um, mm -hmm. you worked on Mitt Romney's campaign. What's it like? 
when the candidate realizes that this is over. What, you know, we always talk about for humans, we go through those different stages, right? Denial, then finally acceptance. What's it like for somebody who's running for the most powerful position in the world to realize that they're just not going to get there? I think it's utter deflation, and uh, it, you probably go through a, a period of just a surreal disconnect from what's happening. And, you know, let's give Hillary the benefit of the, of the doubt. Tonight, she might just not have been able to do that. And if she comes out tomorrow, gives a gracious concession speech, and tries to unite uh, the country behind this presidency and give him all the benefits of the doubt um, going into office, you know, I think that could go a long way. Um, I, the, the Democratic Party is going to have a lot of soul searching themselves to do because they willingly and actively nominated a candidate who lost to Donald Trump in, and got swept off the map in, in Senate and House. And they're going to have to ask themselves, why did we do that? How did we get here? How did the machine, how did, how did the Democratic Party think that only Hillary Clinton could be our, our nominee and, and box everyone else out. A lot and of soul-searching on both as sides. We're also curious about what the markets are doing, particularly in Asia, mm -hmm. what the stock markets could do.